On this slide, I show uh, infrastructure, client-side infrastructure and server-side infrastructure that uses proxies. Now, I was just talking about a reverse proxy, which is really on the server infrastructure side of things. That is, when you are creating a server, you could have your instance one and instance two of your service listening, and those would be on different IP addresses and ports, most likely. Uh, maybe the same port, but different IP addresses. And then you put a reverse proxy in front of them. Now, this reverse proxy, it processes incoming requests into these servers. And reverse proxies, they can do a myriad of uh, features or offer a myriad of features and operations that are available to you. And I list just really some of them here on this slide. The one that I was just talking about on the previous slide was that a reverse proxy offers a stable client endpoint over the changing server instances endpoints over here. As new service instances come and go for scale up and scale down, or as nodes fail and you get healed, right, the reverse proxy is offering a stable endpoint over here, and it's keeping track of everything that happens on the right-hand side. You can also use reverse proxies for load balancing. And there's level four load balancers as well as level seven load balancers. Level four load balancers, they are load balancers that can handle UDP and TCP traffic. Um, and it's level four because of the OSI networking model. They handle traffic that's happening at the level four level of the OSI networking model. So that means any UDP or TCP requests that come into a level four load balancer, those UDP and TCP requests can then be sent to any of the instances over here. But you can also use a reverse proxy for a level seven load balancer. That's level seven in the OSI model, which is the application layer. And that's typically used for HTTP or HTTPS traffic. With a level seven load balancer, it can actually look at HTTP. So it looks at URIs. It can possibly look at headers that are in an HTTP request. And based on the information that it sees there, because it's richer, higher level information, it can use that to figure out how to go and direct traffic on the right hand side. So maybe all incoming traffic with a certain header set to one comes over here, and traffic coming in with a certain header set to two goes over to here, for example. Uh, the reverse proxy, another kind of load balancing it can do is server selection or A-B testing. You might have version one and version two of servers here, and you could say to the reverse proxy, I want 10% of the traffic to go to version two. I want 90% of the traffic to go to version one. So you could do this kind of A-B testing, and 10% of your customers get to experience the new version of your service before you switch everybody over. Uh, we will talk about versioning and this scenario in more detail a little bit later in the course. Uh, you can also use reverse proxies for SSL termination, where you have a you know, certificate over here and HTTP requests come into the reverse proxy. Um, and now once that's done, you can make all the internal network traffic be non-encrypted. Just use HTTP instead of HTTPS. So it's only encrypted up to the proxy, and on the right-hand side of that, it's all unencrypted. You can use reverse proxies to do caching. So the first client request that comes in, it goes out to a server, the server sends some result, and then the reverse proxy can cache that. So any future requests that come in for the same data, the reverse proxy can just return it. It doesn't have to forward it on to a backend service, and that can reduce load on your backend services, allowing you to save more money because you don't need as many machines running if there's certain cached information that gets uh, queried for frequently by a lot of different clients. You can use reverse proxies to do authentication and validation. Clients make requests into here, maybe in their HTTP header, they have an authorization information or some cookie information. The reverse proxy can do the authentication there. And so once anything reaches beyond that reverse proxy, we know that the authentication has happened successfully. Uh, and we know that this is a valid operation to be performed. The reverse proxy could be used to do tenant throttling and billing. Client requests that come in, the reverse proxy can say, well, I've seen, I'm, I'm seeing more than 1,000 requests per second from this particular client. 
and we're just going to return failure here and not allow them to make that many requests into us per second. Um, so we won't send any more traffic to the back end so it doesn't have to deal with that kind of throttling, bookkeeping, or accounting. And I mentioned billing here as well. Some services bill for every request that comes into it. So if the reverse proxy does the authentication properly, it knows who to increment the billing counter for, right? whoever they authenticated. So at the end of the month, they can go and send that tenant a bill. Um, and then some reverse proxies use distributed denial of service mitigation. So if they see a lot of requests coming in over here, they can also do things to kind of stop accepting requests from those clients for maybe the next hour or the next day kind of thing so that your service backends over here don't have to worry as much about distributed denial of service attacks that might be uh, being attempted against your service. Now that's what the reverse proxy does. Um, for completeness sake, I also put on the slide here the client infrastructure, and the client infrastructure can have a forward proxy, or as it's more commonly referred to as just a proxy. But when people say proxy, they typically mean a forwarding proxy as opposed to a reverse proxy. So this would be on the client infrastructure. It could be that you work at a big company and there's lots of computers within that company. Those computers are all making requests, let's say, to the same website to go get some information. So that company might set up a proxy itself. And so all the employees at that company, they make requests to this forwarding proxy, which can do a bunch of things before it forwards the request onto the server where it would hit the reverse proxy. So let's just look at some of the things that a forward proxy can do. Well, it processes outgoing requests as opposed to the reverse proxy, which process incoming requests. And the forward proxy, it can do content filtering. It might be that at your company, your uh, administrators has set up the forward proxy to do to prevent certain traffic from coming in. Uh, there might be certain sub uh, websites that your company has deemed to be inappropriate or not to be used. And so they can set up this proxy to say, well, somebody's making a request to this website. We're just gonna shut that down right here. And that avoids any network traffic going out over the internet to hit there. That can be done for censoring purposes or it could be done for translation. Maybe the employees here hit some website and it's some foreign language, and the forward proxy can translate the contents of that website into their language of choice, their native language, before the HTML pages are returned back to over here. Forward proxies can be used for caching. So if a lot of employees at the company are getting the same information over and over and over again, the forward proxy can go and make a request, cache it over here, and then simply return it. This way the requests don't have to go out over the internet. That saves the company money by reducing its bandwidth usage, um, but it also gives the employees a better experience because you're not hitting the internet, the performance faster is faster of returning that information back. The company might set up the forwarding proxy to do logging or monitoring. Maybe it just wants to know when people are in the office or what websites are being used frequently or what, how much data people are downloading. All this can be done for logging and monitoring and it can be used to better fine tune the client infrastructure within that company's and its offices. Maybe it needs more Wi-Fi routers, maybe it needs more, wi more wired routers and it can monitor this to see what would give the employees a better experience. And then forward proxies are also used frequently for client anonymization. If you make a request to a server, a lot of times your network, the client side network information is sent to the server so it can go and send a reply back to you. Um, but that might be divulging too much information to the servers, like possibly your GPS location information, for example. So people use proxies in order to do some kind of anonymization before the request goes out so that the servers know less information about the clients and you can feel a little bit more secure in your identity or your location or other uh, interesting artifacts about yourself.